Okay, so as you probably know, violence is nothing new to American health care. In fact, it's a global phenomenon. If you've taken some of my courses earlier or seen some of my videos, um, the uh, the violence in health care is sometimes uh, uh, shockingly high. And in fact, uh, according to national statistics, health care workers and um, social service providers are sometimes two to three times more likely to suffer non-fatal attacks than police officers or even correctional officers. So this is a world of punches. It's a world of verbal insults, for, for verbal threats. It's kicks, scratches, stabbings. Um, it's bites. It's uh, sometimes stabbings and shootings. And uh, unfortunately, that's simply a fact of life. That said, however, you must understand that shootings, hospital shootings, are a low frequency but high fear event. They surprisingly don't occur that often, but when they do, it generates a lot of turmoil, a lot of tumult, a lot of fear, and sometimes, frankly, a lot of overreaction. And sometimes the, the motives of these hospital shootings are what we call targeted violence, which makes them especially difficult to try to counter and prevent. For example, let's just take a look at some examples. So in this first scenario, we have an elderly uh, married couple, and this has occurred more than once uh, in the United States. Wife, age 82, diagnosed with terminal illness. The distraught husband of 60 years brings a handgun to the hospital. The result is a tragic murder-suicide. No hospital staff were physically injured, however several were traumatized. So I would say unfavorable medical outcomes is probably the most common motivator of these hospital shootings, although that's just my gut feel and it's not based on any scientific evidence. For example, this typical case, a male, age 52, blamed a physician for the death of his mother. He returned to the hospital three years after the death. He found the physician on the hospital ward, shot, and killed him. Shooter then committed suicide in front of terrified hospital staff, patients, and visitors. So here's yet another unfavorable medical outcome. Male 62 approaches an outpatient clinic. He is angry about a urological procedure that did not correct his erectile dysfunction. He enters the medical office and proceeds to the examination area. After locating the physician, the assailant kills him with a semi-automatic handgun. He then waits passively for the arrival of the police. Now please note, as identified here with the asterisk, the door between the reception area and the clinical area was not locked or controlled in any way. That's why I do these courses, these programs, and try to educate you and armor you against these types of situations. Please heed. Next we have what I call dysfunctional relationships and these can come in many different flavors. For example, you've undoubtedly heard of several reports of so-called gangbangers entering emergency departments. Their objective is typically to kill an opposing gang member that has been brought to the hospital. Contrasted to this, we have incidents of domestic violence flowing into the clinic or into the hospital. Victims can include patients as well as staff. These confrontations occasionally include firearms. Issues regarding pain management can also be problematic. In this case, a 26-year-old male repeatedly visits an ambulatory care pain management clinic. Recent arguments and outbreaks result in hiring an unarmed security guard to supervise the lobby. The receptionist informs the patient to leave the property as physician will no longer see him. Patient threatens receptionist with a 22 caliber revolver. The security guard attempts to intervene and is killed by the assailant. If you've been in the business long enough, it's probably occurred to you 
to ask why do so many people come to the hospital to commit suicide, to end their lives. Take for example this situation, a young male 23 with autism arrives at the emergency department at shift change. He appears happy-go-lucky and arrives at the door on a skateboard. Dismounting the skateboard, he quickly produces a handgun and shoots himself in the head. Despite the best efforts of nearby medical professionals, he dies at the scene. Subsequent investigation suggested the young man was committed to suicide because of his lifelong autism. And he apparently chose the hospital mistakenly because he wanted to donate his organs to others. More recently, in October of 2022, in Dallas, Texas, two nurses are gunned down. Nestor Hernandez, age 30, was on parole for aggravated robbery and was wearing an active ankle monitor bracelet. He was visiting his girlfriend who had just given birth. While in the hospital, Hernandez accused his girlfriend of having an affair and claimed the baby was not his. He promised to kill the first people who came through the door, in addition to himself and the girlfriend. Two nurses responded. Cut down in a hail of gunfire were Jacqueline Pakua, 45, and Annette Flowers, age 63. A responding police officer engaged and wounded Hernandez. He was taken into custody and will be charged with two counts of capital murder. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I just want to leave you with three key points as a uh, uh, attempt at reviewing what we just covered. First of all, violence is common in healthcare. This is not only true in the United States, but globally. However, here in the United States, shooters, uh, actually lethal events, are surprisingly uncommon. But that doesn't mean that when they do occur, when they do occur, they can be traumatic and unsettling to all those involved. Point two, these events, these shootings, and non-lethal um, events, but we're talking about shootings right now, shootings can occur, as we saw in these case studies, can occur both in, in the hospital environment and the ambulatory care clinical environment off-site. Keep that in mind. Don't get too comfortable. And finally, point three, I would hope that you understand that you're not working at McDonald's or the local mall. This is healthcare. You're working in a very difficult, um, stress-prone human landscape. People are afraid, people are in pain, people are dying, people are facing the unknown, and these often uh, manifest themselves into some pretty uh, potentially violent situations. Finally, want to learn more about the unique challenges faced by your profession? Then you might want to check out these violence prevention and risk management courses. First, we have violence inoculation for healthcare professionals, and also risk management for medical office staff. Both are presented by myself, Cole Morris, and both are available exclusively at udemy.com. Hope to see you there.